Thank you. Thank you very much, Bwana uh, MC. And uh, I would like, I would like, maybe you settle down a bit. I can hear some commotion on this side. I think the song was very electrifying and is still reverberating in their bodies. <laughs> I'm Jambo. Osaureuru. Chamge. Thank you very much. You can hear where is the crowd from that response. Thank you very much. Now, cognizance of the fact that the president has got very little time. I don't want to spend any more time. And I might not repeat what I'd said previously. But also cognizance of the fact that this is the last time that this family is saying bye to their mother, their sister, their auntie, and so on. I'll give you time to say something very quickly. Maybe no speeches. But uh, just uh, what you had written as a um, as, uh, tribute. If you can start and just say, um, I don't know if I can make you talk any quicker, but please do. <laughs> so we just read the tribute. Just read the tribute. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hi, my name is Brian Abonyo, and this is my tribute to my mother. You can talk a bit. Okay. Maybe before I. <laughs> That's what <you> said. <laughs> All right, so as I said, my name is Brian Ochieng Kibet Abonyo. Um, I'm the firstborn son of the family. Um, as I said, and I'm sorry for repeating, but yes, so I've been away for a while, for about 15 years, um, but I did come back home in December. I was coming home purely because I've been away for too long. I'd missed my parents. I wanted a little bit of a change, so I came back to Kenya. Little did I know that I was coming back to receive some really bad news of, of mom's cancer recurring. Um, I thank God I came home. I, that, that's all I can say about that because it has been really important for me to get closure, to, to spend time with mom because prior to that, then I, I kept asking myself, what could I have done different? Should I have come home earlier? But the, the truth of the matter is that um, mom wouldn't have wanted that. Mom herself, even after being diagnosed in 91, it didn't stop her from going ahead to get her PhD done. It didn't stop her from going and vying for that sotic seat. It didn't stop her from becoming deputy speaker or becoming governor after that. So I had to do what I needed to do in Australia, and I should be happy with that. And now I've come back home to be with the family. Um, Mom was, was a, a regular mother, like any mother. You know, she would get us ready for school, but when we were younger, she would come to all those prize-giving day ceremonies. She, you know, she was just a regular mother. And for me and Ted, being born, having a Kipsigis mother and a Luo father was fantastic, you know? I don't know any different. We, we got this rare opportunity to have a good mix of, of Luo culture and Kipsigis culture. Some holidays we go to Sotik, some holidays we go to Kisumu. We, we would have those days when we are enjoying goat meat and milk and mursik, and then other times we go and we have fish, you know? Um, so, you know, we had a lot of, you know, ngege and buta. The only fish we don't really like is omena, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I, I think at this point what I wanted to say is, you know, we were only notified of mom's illness when um, in the one she got in 91 when we were about 20. And I think all we can say about that whole situation is thank, thank, thank God we've had her for the, all this time. So if mom, if mom was, was, you know, if she had been, if God had taken her when, in 1991 when I was seven and Ted was four, you know, who would have been there for us? Who would have been there when we really needed a mother? Now we're adults, you know, we've got our lives and we can take it from here. But those days, those formative years when we needed that mother's love and, and there's a lot of people who don't have that opportunity, but we did. And so as a result, we have to be grateful to God that he was able to, 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 to you know, to have mom there, to come to my plays when I was acting, to, to go to Ted's recitals, to see Ted become a pilot. I remember when we were bringing, uh, lifting her back and she, she even asked, my son, are you flying me back home? And that really touched my heart. But she was able to educate him and get him through all of that and, and, and you know, see him now accomplish what he really is. You've all heard mom was a peacemaker. You've all heard that she was non-confrontational. You've all heard that, you know, she had a lot for Bomet that she wanted to get done. But unfortunately, that wasn't to be because there was another plan from the Lord. Um, in terms of her illness, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I think, um, you know, we'd go to those therapies and we'd go to all those treatments and... Um, and it was difficult. Initially, we were doing it and we were fighting and we were strong and we, we said we can do this and we'll get there. But very quickly, in the last two months, um, she really deteriorated. And even though we stood there every day, but it was so hard looking into her eyes as she lay on that bed helpless. And so at this point, I think that as a family, we've accepted. And, and all of us as families, friends, and well-wishers, let us accept and let us mom rest. Let, let, let's let mom rest and let's be happy with the will of God. Um, <clears throat> to dad. 
I would like to thank you for being there for mom. I, I'd like to thank you for, for really exemplifying, you know, what, when you say your vows and you say for better or for worse, through sickness and in health, you have really demonstrated that. <laughs> keep, keep being strong. I know how hard this is. I know how hard this is on you. Keep being strong and we'll also try to be there for you as much as we can. It really pains me that mom didn't get a chance to live in the house we have here in Fort Tannen. It really breaks my heart that she's not going to get a chance to live in the house that we are completing in Karen. But let's take heart knowing that she did everything. Let's take, let, I think we'll keep the interior designers and the architects who are involved in getting the houses prepared. And we'll put all pictures and memories of her to make sure that she's still there with us. And um, what I would like to say finally is knowing that mom will be resting in Fortana, and even though we'd not come traveling um, up country a lot, now for sure, knowing that mom is just there, we will make it a regular occurrence, we will do it up, and we'll make that our home. <laughs> Rest in peace, mom. You are the most amazing person I ever met. Thank you. Maybe you're not reading the tribute because it's already in the program. Okay. So, Ted, you want to come and read yours? Hello, everyone. Um, Ted Okomo Kipto Abonyo, uh, last one son to the late choice. And this is my tribute to mom. Mom, thank you so much for everything you have done for me in my life. Words can't des describe the amount of love I feel for you and forever will feel. Watching you in your condition over the past few months broke my heart, knowing how strong you have been all through our lives. You have been a pillar of strength to so many people and you have bravely battled this illness with all you had. I apologize for all the instances I gave you a hard time and I thank you for all the unconditional love and for never giving up on me. I promise to be strong and to make you proud. Rest with the angels, mom. See you on the other side, your son, Ted. Yeah. <clears throat> My tribute to mom. Mama, you're so special to me, and I thank God for you. I thank God that you're my second mother. Thank you for loving me and caring for me and ensuring that I lack nothing. You are a brilliant mother and a leader who set high standards for all of us. You'll be remembered for your humility and regard for others. Seeing you suffer for the last two months was a big blow to us, but you fought till the end. I will cherish the last conversation we had where you told me that you loved me, that you really miss us. I know you still wanted to do so much for the people of Bomet, but God wanted you to be with him in heaven watching over us. Rest in peace, Mama. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I won't read my tributes because I've read it before, but I just want to say that as a member, as, as an addition to the Abonyo family, I was really fortunate because when I came first to live with the Abonyo family, I was six years old. Um, Mom was in the UK and I met my brothers and Ted was only speaking Luo. The whole household was speaking Luo and I was speaking English from America because I just come from the States and we could not communicate. But as a result, because of living in that home, Anyalo loso do Luo maber. We will miss, you know, the childhood that we had. We cherish it. Me and my brothers talk about it a lot when we used to live uh, in the tea estates, you know. And even, you know, the Christmas parties we had where, you know, mom and dad would just come from different sides of the room and dance Lingala during the parties and we'd wonder if the, they used to practice in the bedroom by themselves. <laughs> um, as we said, mom loved dance. And even during her last days, the song that we just played, as we would play it in the hospital, as much as she was sick, she tried to master some energy to, you know, move, move a little. And I think this song is a real testament that really her pain and her sorrow is now gone. What she went through through the last days was really more than any person should ever have to go through. It was a painful, full cup that she had to drink. But now she's at peace and we're at peace with that. Rest in mom. Thank you. Thank, rest in peace, mom. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Your Excellency, the President, the Deputy President, <clears throat> uh, 
former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, Musalia Mudavadi, and all protocols of sub MPs and MCAs, good afternoon. Let me send my tribute. She tries to wear her pain on the inside. She always has it in the trademark of the older sibling. I think being an elder sister, it was healthy that she would sometimes pinch me. She constantly advised me to always move forward and never backward. My sister, even though I may not have told you how much I appreciated all you told, did for me, richly blessed is how I feel having a sister like you. David Laboso, thank you. Where do broken hearts go? We are broken as a family. We don't know where we'll start from. Joyce was our pillar. She was the firstborn. And I experienced a lot of time with her, especially in hospital. Before she left, she, before she left London, in Nairobi, London, I told her I was going to join her in a week. And Joyce told me, um, you, come to Nairobi, you come to London next week and uh, you'll, you'll meet me there. So she hugged me at the airport. But before that, we talked about her sickness. And I told her, Joyce, you, your kid, she told me her kidneys were failing. And I told her, Joyce, really, I can't help you because I'd already get, donated one of my kidneys to my dad 26 years ago. And I told her, I'll, I'll, let me talk to Ted and see whether he can donate a kidney. I thought that sickness was actually, I, for real, I didn't know that Joyce was this sick. I even told her in India, Joyce, we're going back home. I'm not going to leave you anywhere. We're going back home. But Edwin knew everything, and I kept looking at him and asking him for questions and answers. All these guys were with me in India, and nobody told me. One day we were sitting down in, in her bed. She was really sick at that time, and her voice was disappearing. And uh, she had talked to the president, and she, she got what she wanted from him, and the president said, let Joyce get anything she wants. Then one of the days she just said, William Samoe. I told her, what about William? She, she kept quiet. I still don't know, but I want to tell you guys, Joyce loved you very, very much, with all her heart. And she hopes that the country has unity. That's all, and I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Uh, you can pull this one and give. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry. I think I'm hiring too much. Okay. The President of our great nation, Kenya, Your Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, Your Excellency the Deputy President of Kenya, Dr. William Samoe Arapruto, the Council of Governors, and all protocols observed, I greet you all. Pam Jambo. Today is a particular honor for me because, let's face it, the pre my presence in this stage is pretty unlikely. I stand here to celebrate and mourn the, our great aunt, for she lived a fulfilled life in, sh in such a short time. You taught me so much that I would urge our youth today to love what they do and dedicate their time because it's an investment to pay off. I thank you, Mr. President and your deputy for the support you have given us. May God continue blessing you abundantly with wisdom and knowledge so that you might lead this great country of ours, Kenya. Dear aunt, you fought a good fight. Rest in peace, for in God's right hand, you are seated, smiling with the angels. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Laboso. I'll not read my tribute because I read it yesterday. So I want there's an appreciation, uh, appreciation I want to, my, my, friend, my, sister, my cousin to read for me. Praise the Lord. Um, this is to you, Edwin, on behalf of, from Mary. You are heaven sent, and the others come walking. I quote <laughs> Honorable Rachel Shebesh, words in, word, no words in the world are, can explain the kind of a brother-in-law you have been to me. Thanks for always offering a shoulder to lean on, Edwin. Thank you for being there when my mom and my sister needed you the most. 
May God continue uh, shining upon you and expanding your territories. Amen.